Hi there, I'm Pete Ewan, work for uh, Wool Organic Farm down on the south coast in Dorset to talk about some mechanical weeding. So I've worked here now for 10 years and in my time we've been harrow combing and in the last four or five years we've moved away from harrow combing to inter-row hoeing with a Garford camera guided hoe. Uh, our Garford hoe is uh, matched to our drill width and drill spacings. So we drill with a Vadastat four meter S box drill and Garford set the hoe to our exact spacing. So we drill with 16 rows over four meters and our hoe runs uh, 17 shares over the same four meters, which matches perfectly in the field. The hoe sees what it needs through this camera, picking up three rows from the drill and knowing that those three rows will match the further 14 the camera tells the hoe where it needs to be in relation to the ground and away you go. Uh, so th this morning conditions are far from perfect, sort of heavy fog, quite damp out here. Um, first pass in a young crop like this we might, might travel anywhere up to about 10k in a second pass which will be three to four weeks time you know depending on the crop depending on the weed burden things like that you'd better travel up to 20k so you know comfortably do 100 acres in a day with a four meter tool so we choose not to tram line through our crops a few reasons being one that we'd take up a lot of percentage of field with tram lines taking out uh, a two rows in every 16 across an entire field um, so we choose to hoe with our little 2850 1980s 2850 with the hoe on the back weighs a fraction over four tons on 600 flotations on the back running at a nice low ground pressure so we barely mark the field when we're in here we pass the same place up to three times in certain fields and over five years we're yet to record significant damage but you know it's arguable that we could be but the small amount of damage done by traveling on on the crop to do the hoeing is insignificant in comparison to the damage that the weeds would do had we not been able to hoe the field in the first place so looking at some rows here that have been passed through uh, we can see a small amount of soil coverage on the plants um, due to the soil being slightly sticky plants are arguably slightly too small but weather conditions are good at the moment and you can't can't pass a good weather window by uh, so you can see soil is untouched under the plant and hoed everything in between so our main weed issues we have down here is corn marigolds in the summer for you, those who don't know what corn marigolds are they're the devil plant that ripped through an entire crop pulling it to the ground making it impossible to combine uh, charlock earlier in the year and a few docks um, bits and pieces a uh, bit of cooch never too concerned about the cooch but Garford, I'd expect to take out 90 to 95 percent of these weeds. Anything inside of the row, uh, the the plant should be able to manage itself and choke out. And anything inside the row, we'll eliminate with the hoe. You know, one, two, three passes, whatever's necessary. So here we're looking at a crop of spring barley drilled three weeks ago to the day and hoed 48 hours ago. Now, um, as you see, it's starting to stand back up. Uh, any soil coverage, it's starting to push its way back through. And um, rows are looking relatively healthy and I expect them to pick up a deep, deep green and get growing in some warm sunshine now. Uh, so here we're looking at a crop of uh, winter oats which were hoed four weeks ago in some fairly poor conditions, poor wet conditions. Uh, Given the chance we'll be back out here again any time to uh, another pass which should see them through then till harvest.